This is indeed the G. Gordon Liddy Show. We're good to go and ready to launch. G. Gordon Liddy is one of America's leading radio talk show hosts. In 1973, he was imprisoned for his part in the Watergate scandal. Liddy first came to the notice of the White House as an assistant DA, whose patch covered the Millbrook estate. The paddies were dropping as fast as the acid, and uh, this disturbed the local burghers. We understood from our informers that the front door was always open, and the plan was to uh, sneak in you know, there the uh, indigenants uh, appeared. They were coming out the doors. There were half of them were whacked out on some drug or another. They were led by Timothy Leary and his then inamorata Rosemary. In the Leary's bedroom, there was a container of vegetable matter, and Rosemary uh, was protesting, saying that that was her sacrament. I told, I told the state troopers not to take that plant, that that was my favorite plant, but they insisted, and of course it was a dead fuchsia plant with a lot of peat moss at the bottom. The police claimed they found both marijuana and LSD at the house, but the case was thrown out by a grand jury and never went to trial. Leary was feeling the effects of the backlash against LSD. Undoubtedly, it can cause psychological damage but a flurry of propaganda films now exaggerated its dangers. Any stress in this rising phase will trip this man into a bad trip. Terrified. He's not seeing pretty visions, he's seeing monsters. He's losing his mind and he feels it going. There's only one escape from this discomfort. That's suicide. Leary had brought LSD into the limelight and in doing so, he had brought opprobrium on more than just himself. Research had shown that psychedelic drugs could help in treating alcoholism, chronic pain, even schizophrenia. But by 1967, LSD was illegal in most of the USA, and all research projects involving psychedelic drugs had been closed down. <laughs> most of them blamed Tim Leary fairly legitimately, because he certainly was the point man that, uh, that popularized this thing and threw it into the public domain. LSD was now seen as a catalyst of the hippie culture that so dismayed the American establishment. And Timothy Leary, who for so long had preached caution in its use, now simply trotted out his mantra. Turn on, tune in, and turn drop on, out. Tune in, we're drop turned out. on, and we're tuned in, and we're very dropped out. It's one, two, three, what are we fighting for? Don't ask me, I don't give a damn. Let's stop with Vietnam. And as the counterculture grew, so did the campaign against the Vietnam War. Leary's influence seemed more dangerous than ever. When the White House looked at the counterculture for leaders, one person stood front and center. Leary was arrested a dozen times during the late 60s, and the more he was targeted, the more provocative he became. I, I urge all of you to go back to your campuses and start some sort of a dropout movement. Uh, that's the only way we're going to bring this country of menopausal, whiskey-drinking, congressmen, senators, and so forth, to their senses. And when I mean their senses, I mean their senses. The government found he was a very convenient scapegoat because there he was out front telling everybody to tune on, tune in, and drop out. In 1968, the 30 year sentence Leary had been fighting since his arrest at the Mexican border was overturned by the Supreme Court. The media sought his reaction. He gave them an announcement We're going to uh, become uh, the next governor of the state of California. We're going to start a new political party. And by party, we mean party. It was an opportune moment. He couldn't waste it. He had to say something. We want to turn on the whole state. There's no excuse for any Californian not to be high and happy and laughing all the time. He was a show-off. He was an egomaniacal show-off. <laughs> Standing against Ronald Reagan, Leary received the ultimate stamp of approval from the counterculture. John and Yoko invited us to Montreal where they were staging a bed-in for peace.
John asked how he could help, and we asked him to write a song for us. And we told him our slogan was, come together, join the party. John subsequently wrote, come together. Leary never did make it to the governor's mansion. Before his campaign got going, he was jailed for 10 years for possession of two joints. The judge at his trial called him the most dangerous man in America. So the most dangerous man in America was housed in the lowest security wing of the prison. A few months later, he escaped. Tim essentially had to climb up on a roof hang from a telephone wire. He pulled himself hand over hand until he reached the telephone pole, shimmied down the telephone pole and dropped to the ground outside the walls of the prison. 